Hey guys, welcome back. This video is for anyone that has come into the spreadsheet and sees uh, a situation like this where there's a bunch of NAs right now. Um, in the last few days, Google Finance stopped uh, reporting information for Canadian REITs. I'm not sure why, but basically if you have a Canadian REIT in your current holdings and you're using the spreadsheet, it's going to like throw up a bunch of errors like this. Um, or if you had some in the past, you're probably going to get hit by some errors right now as well. And I'm just going to show you how to get around this because I did find a workaround in the last two days um, that will be able to clear all of these automatically if you copy and paste in some formulas. Uh, and you won't have to like manually update the price each day as I showed in the last video, which was like an emergency just kind of hack fix. Um, but I just didn't really have time at that, at that moment to look into what the solution was, but unfortunately I found something that's going to work for us for now. Um, with that said, just guys, remember, I am not a financial advisor. I am not a financial professional. Uh, I'm just a guy on YouTube that like happens to be okay at making spreadsheets, and I've made this template and shared it with you guys. And I'm doing my best to make it work properly. I, I like how it works, but every now and then, like if Google just stops showing us information, like Google Finance is a built-in formula that's available to all Google Sheets users that, that brings in financial information to the spreadsheet for us to use. And if they stop giving us information, then we can't do anything. So it's a pretty like big problem uh, when that happens. Um, but anyways, I'm trying to make the best possible spreadsheet here and uh, I'm trying to maintain it like because I know a lot of people are using it. Um, I want to be able to keep it going when things like this happen. So uh, this is my best uh, attempt at that right now. Uh, keep in mind, like I, I, I have a full-time job that has nothing to do with finance, um, and so I'm pretty busy. So fortunately, I was able to get this one out within about two days. But I know there are some people that have issues with like Neo Exchange not showing um, correct values or like some obscure stocks and I'm working on trying to get formulas for those as well but I'm like super busy with other things in life and this is my side project so uh, I'm doing my best over here uh, but I do appreciate everyone for shooting me some emails letting me know that they're they're experiencing things and uh, like, like working with me to uh, to help clear the issues so anyways with that said um, let's take a quick look at what's going on with Google Finance because it's just not pulling in REIT information we can see it right here on the Google Finance website if you type in, try to find some Canadian stocks like sru.un, there's going to be nothing there even on the Google Finance website. If, uh, if you do rei.un for RealCan, absolutely nothing there. If you type in the, the names, you're only finding stuff from the OTC markets in US dollars. This is not anything to do with the Toronto Stock Exchange. Same if you do sru. Uh, sorry, smart centers, for example. It's only bringing up OTC markets. There's nothing here in here about uh, Toronto Stock Exchange, and I don't know why Google has stopped reporting it, um, but they did. And so anyways, we need to like uh, work around this and find a different source of data, which I did, and I'm going to show you how to get it working in your spreadsheet. So um, let's jump into the portfolio, first of all. Uh, it's probably looks something like this with you for you if you have a few different reads, you're going to see NAs all over the place. Uh, the best thing to do is to group them together um, we can do that with the current value here. Let's maybe just bring it Z to A. It's going to pop those NAs up to the top. You could also do it by sector, sort by sector, and it's going to put all of the real estate ones together, however you want to do it. Maybe we'll do it so it's just at the top here. Um, if you don't know how that works, I'm using a filter here, these drop down sorting things. If you are using the street and you can't see that, it's because your filter is off. Uh, you can toggle it on and off with this button up here. So I'm just going to turn it off and those things are gone. If I want to turn it back on again, just click anywhere inside your data table and hit that button. If you can't see that button, create a filter, come up here to format, uh, sorry, data, and create a filter. And you can turn them on that way and we can see these things in here now. Okay, um, actually I'm going to put it like this just to make a point. Um, so we're going to delete the current price for our broken REITs that are not working. Um, and we're going to put in a new formula here. If you ever do tamper with these built-in formulas and you want to get them back, just click the cell that's directly above or directly below. Uh, grab this little handle here and drag it back over. That's going to bring back in the original formulas for the sheet. No matter what you did there in the past, it'll reset it to what I had uh, programmed in there. And uh, in the future, you can check uh, and to see if Google Finance has started working again. Uh, and if not, we're just going to roll with what we have today. So I'm going to clear these out for now. Current price is going to be empty. And uh, now we're going to use these formulas here. Um, these are in the description below as well. 
you will be able to copy and paste them from the description and follow along in the video and get your sheet working properly. So just so for a quick um, intro idea of what's going on here is an import XML function. We're going to be pulling from Degrin. Uh, Degrin.com is like a website that uh, profiles dividend stocks and some information about them. And then there's a bunch of stuff over here, this XML path. So if you don't know what any of this XML stuff is or HTML, whatever, don't worry about it. All you have to do is go into the video description, find variation one, and we're going to copy it. Control C or Control V. Um, we're going to have to temp. We're going to have to like change it a little bit once we paste it in, and I'll show you that in one second. But we're going to try variation one first. They're very slightly different. They're almost the same. Um, and we're going to set variation one for each stock. And if that doesn't work for any of them, we're going to replace the broken ones with variation two, and that should cover hopefully every Canadian REIT uh, possible. The why there's two formulas is not really worth explaining. Um, just we're going to start with one and go to the second one after. Okay, so we're going to come in here, we're going to double click and we press control V. And before you do anything else, come up here and click on the formula line. This is number sign here right after AG. We're going to delete the number sign and we're going to replace it with whatever row number we're in. So for me, I'm in row number 10. So I'm going to replace the number sign. I press backspace and type in one zero for 10. It's going to turn orange and that's going to be what you want to see. Um, if you're working in your street, you're probably going to be something else. If you're in row three or row 30 or whatever, whatever that number is, it's going to be even highlighted a slightly different color from the rest. Replace the number sign with that number. And now you can press enter. Okay, so it's going to bring in this one. It actually checked, it brought in the current price, which is awesome. You can compare it with your broker or you can compare it on Yahoo Finance if you want to be extra sure. So it's 2534 Canadian dollars right now. And that is what it brought in. So that's awesome. That's uh, that's what we want to see. We're going to grab this little blue handle and we're going to drag it down for all of these uh, current prices of Canadian REITs that are not working. And we're going to see what happens next. Okay. So we got one, two, three, four of mine worked and two didn't. That's okay. Uh, you can, if you want, you can take the time to go check that these are all correct or whenever you're doing it, if you're doing this tomorrow or on another day, these, these values will probably be different. Um, so that's cool. But like most people will experience, there uh, that formula didn't work for all of them. I still got two in here that didn't work properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the video description. I'm going to take variation two, that code, or this exact code. You can try typing it all out, but it's kind of tricky. It's easier to copy and paste. So it's in the video description. Copy it. Go back to your spreadsheet. Come into this cell. Just delete it. It doesn't need to be there anymore because we're using a different formula. Double click and press paste. Okay. Again, we have this number sign here. We need to replace with the number of the row that we're working in currently, which now is row 14. Okay, so we come up here, replace that number sign with number 14. This turns orange, we're good to go. You want to hit enter, and it's going to bring in another number, 7966. Awesome. Now drag this down to your affected cell, or if they're not in, in line with each other, click on the next cell and do it again. So go to your video description, or if you still have it copied, copy it, come in and paste it and replace that number sign with the row number that you're in. In this case, now it's 15. Boom, hit enter. And now we're good to go. Hopefully this works for all of your Canadian REITs that were not working. If it doesn't work for all of them, then if there's like one that's the odd one out for now, you're just gonna have to type in the price. Like if it was this one, I'd just have to manually type in 22.22 and I'd have to remember in the future to go and change that every day or whatever, and that would be kind of inconvenient. So hopefully, uh, hopefully the the formula is going to be working for all of them. Um, but either way, once you've put in custom formulas, you can see in this section, this is our formula up here. But if you go back to the other stocks, it's a different formula. So anytime we vary from the standard formulas in the spreadsheet, it is a very good idea to change the font color. This will just remind you in the future that. Um, that these are like not standard formulas because it's very easy to forget and when it gets all mixed up like if we sort it for something else like they suddenly get dispersed throughout and you're gonna like not remember which ones which and in the future if I ever release another updated version of the spreadsheet um, you might when you just change over like customizations that you made like this cell and this cell will not propagate probably into the new spreadsheet so it's gonna be a big problem anyways just if you're changing them like I have done 
um, change the color of the cells that you've, you've customized, okay? So uh, now we'll put them all back together by clustering real estate, by sorting for sector. Um, something else that we have to do is we have to change the currency and in this portfolio tab, all we wanna do is just delete and we're gonna have to manually type it in CAD like that and just drag this down. Uh, and we're gonna see here that now the formula, it's not a formula, it's just the letters CAD. And when we come down here, back to the other stocks, it is a formula and it is a formula up here. If we wanna reset this one day in the future, again, grab the cell above or below, grab this little blue handle and drag it back across. But because Google Finance still doesn't know right now what the currency is, and you can kind of see it in the formula here, Google Finance is telling you the cell number and looking for currency. Um, it, it doesn't recognize our stocks right now. So we're just gonna reset this to CAD. We're gonna type it in. I paste that down and uh, again I've just customized some individual cells so I'm going to change the font color to something unique so I can find this in the future. Okay so this is going to fix most of our problems but you're probably still going to have NA errors in the portfolio uh, sorry in the summary view um, but this is really important to us because as time goes on you hopefully won't have to come back in and like manually update the current price because every day it's going to change or every hour or whatever uh, and this will hopefully follow along. Um, just so you know the source of this information is coming from Digrin, like I said digrin.com and it's basically pulling in this number for each of the the REITs that we're looking at. Uh, they do have a little question mark thing here, and so the price is updated, the last updated at May 31, 2023, 8.31 p.m. I don't know how often these guys update it, um, but like, I, I think it's probably good enough for our purposes. Uh, I was trying to pull in the information from Yahoo Finance, from TMX, from Walmine, like all sorts of places, and it's just not working very well. Um, but we're able to scrape the data off of Digrin for now, so let's just do that. Okay. Anyways, um, so we're gonna we're gonna still have errors in the summary tab here, and that is because you have more errors in your transactions tab. Anything that is a REIT, any of your historical transactions with REITs, are throwing up errors, and the error that's throwing us off is coming from it the, the sheet not detecting what the currency is because Google Finance like doesn't know right now what RioCan is and uh, so because it doesn't know what RioCan is it doesn't know what the currency is and I have that right now set for auto detection of currency and so yeah that, that's why the issue is in here so there's two ways that we can uh, that we can mitigate this one is you can come in if you only have a few transactions you can come in and just individually replace them one at a time and, and change your font color every time you do it. I really recommend doing the font color thing because especially in here you're gonna you're never gonna remember which ones you changed uh, like a year from now or something like that. So you can do that, we can delete, we can type CAD and then we can change the color. This is practical if you have only a few transactions but if you're like me and you have like a few hundred transactions uh, I don't want to come in here and manually type in like every transaction for every REIT that I ever did. That's just going to be a huge mess. Um, if you are like me and you only hold Canadian funds, that'll be a little bit more convenient. I only made one US dollar transaction ever and I've already identified it here in yellow. Um, so I'm just going to avoid that. But basically, instead of doing it one at a time, I'm just going to type, or actually I'll just delete the contents of that cell. I will type CAD. Now it's just the string instead of the formula. I'm going to turn it blue. Uh, which would be here and I'm gonna drag this down and I'm just gonna replace all of my formulas for now so this is uh, replacing all of the original funds even the ones that aren't broken it's just gonna be faster than typing in all of them but I'm still going to maintain the blue color uh, so in the future I don't get mixed up with the ones that I've changed I'm gonna leave the US dollar one because that one's working fine no problem and I'm gonna come back down here and replace this again with a blue CAD and I'm going to drag this down. So if you have like primarily Canadian stocks, only a few US, you can just come down and like stop every time you hit a US dollar one uh, or, or whatever. And the idea is to just replace everything. This is much quicker than like doing the manual thing each time. And sorry, I was getting a little carried away with what I was talking there. And we're going to come down and go right down to the bottom one and replace it all with our blue CIDs. In the future, on the next stock that I buy, if I buy like a TSE, uh, like TD Bank or something, 
it's going to auto detect that uh, as uh, correctly as a Canadian stock, and that's cool. I can just go. I can roll the formulas from here on out. Um, but at some point, I would probably like to come back and reset these back to the the original formulas. Um, but not until it's all fixed and working properly. So if this was, for example, a TD, in the future I can grab this cell, I can drag it up, uh, and, but if I do that now, I don't have to go all the way, like I said, when we hit a, a read, it's not ready yet, so we're just going to leave it for now, um, as is. Uh, when we go to the summary page now, we're going to see here that there are no more NAs, and that is exactly what we want. The pie charts are showing correctly, the totals are showing correctly, everything's squeaky clean, and that is mission accomplished. Um, in the portfolio tab, we didn't bother setting uh, the the name here. I can identify my stocks based on the ticker, and that's okay. Um, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm sure there's like I could tweak that import formula to bring in like the name or something, but it's just really not the important thing. It's not affecting anything really. Uh, and same in the transactions tab. The names are not showing up for me. I don't care. It's not. It's not a big thing. And when you go in the dividends tab, same thing. Um, it's just the name that's not showing up. But the dividends, which are user inputted, are, are are functioning properly, and then and then that's kind of driving the bar chart here. And we don't have any actual issues due to that. So I would stop there. Um, and and this is hopefully going to work for the foreseeable future to clear those NAs uh, that these reads were causing. So yeah, guys, um, that was kind of a, a long-winded uh, rant about this, but just like I said, this is um, this is a side project of mine, and I do want it to be working for myself, and I want it to be working for everyone else. And uh, when you when you manage a spreadsheet that like five hundred people are using and typing in random stuff into all the time and managing things that you can't see what they're doing. Uh, I can only kind of guess how people are using it um, based on some of the feedback that I get in the emails and, and on YouTube comments. Uh, and I do my best when I make um, a fix or a patch or an update or something, I try to make it in a way that will like work for everyone, which is actually kind of a unique thing. Like if you make a spreadsheet for yourself, you can just do whatever you want. Uh, but to roll out uh, updates that, that like hundreds of people can use is kind of, you have to put a little bit of thought into it and make sure it's working for everyone. Because I'm sure after I publish this video, I want to get a wave of emails again of people that are like finding some obscure thing that's not working. Um, and yeah, if you, if you have to just type in, like for example, if hr.un wasn't working, just type in the price manually, go on Yahoo Finance, figure out what it is, and color this one something different because it's like different than the rest. And, and then every time you sign in, be like, oh yeah, what, I gotta set that one or something. So yeah, guys, um, hopefully it's helpful. Sorry it's not working properly, but it is completely out of my control if if Google Finance just stops letting us, you know, use Google products, which is like Google Sheets, to, to, to track um, well-known, non-obscure stocks. So yeah, guys, um, that's that. If you do have any issues, uh, please feel free to uh, drop a comment in the video or come into the welcome tab. You can find my email in there. Send an email and I will eventually get back to you. Uh, and like I said, if your issue is with neo stocks or with obscure stocks, um, I'm working on it. This was a this was a more widespread critical problem that I, I needed to find a solution to f quicker because this is impacting like almost every user. Um, but I'm I'm trying to find uh, solutions for you guys with the neo stocks and uh, and the other stocks as well. So guys, um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you made it this far, well, uh, good for you. And don't forget that the formulas that you need, variation one and variation two, are in the description below. And uh, yeah, hopefully that it was clear enough and you guys can get your sheets working and be back on track.